it's sun and fun and we have to look at this new aircraft I say new because this is the first one of these in the United States this is Rotorvox I'm Dan Johnson beside me here is Corvus Berger who is the man for this airplane this aircraft in the United States is that correct Corvus? That is correct Dan. Alright so tell me uh, give me sort of the the general overview of Rotorvox We've seen a lot of interest in the gyroplane market, not gyrocopter, but gyroplane market. And there's a variety of interesting looking machines. I want you to kind of work toward placing this in the overall market and tell me a little bit about how this one's different than all the other gyroplanes that people might have seen. Okay, thank you, Dan. The Rotorvox C2A, the aircraft we are sitting in, is considered a uh, luxury gyroplane. We call it the business class gyroplane. Business class gyroplane. Yes. I like that. Uh, it is manufactured by Rotorvox in Germany. Rotorvox is owned by the same holdings company that owns Fly Design, so we're actually affiliated with them. Okay. With Tom Pagini. The uh, Rotorvox is a fully composite carbon fiber aircraft. Okay, yeah, I'm not seeing any welded structure anywhere. Oh, maybe some wheels or whatnot, but the basic structure is all composite. That is correct. Carbon basic, fiber. Uh, basic structure is all composite carbon fiber. It is a uh, crash protected cell for the for the occupants. Okay. It, up to uh, Formula One racing standards. Uh, the the structure uh, will protect the occupants in, in in the event of a hard landing or a rollover. Ah, okay. The, okay. the canopy we see here actually does not have any load bearing function. The, the canopy is also carbon fiber body shell. It, it is, offers okay. great visibility along with the little foot windows down there. And it has vents built in on the sides and the top, along with the, the ones by your feet. Oh, this yeah. Oh, I see some up there as well. Then. The, yep. So they'd be right down. We'll, we'll see. They'll be right here then somewhere. Huh? Yes, sir. And then the, the, the beams running down the length of the, the canopy are little holes in the side. That allows for defogging of oh, the, I see. Okay. the canopy in cold weather. Yeah, I don't know if the camera can even see that, but there are regularly spaced holes at least in the one I see there. And you're saying up on here as well? Yes, sir. And so air can air gets in there. Oh, I see the inlet for the air up yep. front. So it gets in there and it kind of spreads it out on the screen so you would keep that demisted then. Exactly. There is an electric blower fan in the front oh, there which okay. will force the air through. Okay. The controls are down here on the center console. I see. It okay. has a heater for cold weather. Recently, I was flying with uh, Renee, the engineer in uh, Woodstock, Connecticut area. Okay. And it was extremely cold outside. This is when all those storms came through. Yeah, you've had a lot we of were, weather up there. We were so warm and comfy inside. We were flying in short sleeves and, and pants. Is that right? Wow. That is correct. Wow, beautiful. Well, let's lower this down here briefly, just so we can see it. Certainly. Uh, you're going to do it all there. Okay. All right, so yeah, that is a, wow, that's a wide open view, and it's a long view, too. I don't feel compressed in here at all, and I have got leg room, like, no tomorrow. I mean, I, I, I can't even stretch my legs out any further, and there's still lots of room in front of me. So There is a lot yeah, of space very, in here. Kind of like business class on the airliner, all right, in Ex that I can stretch out, which I can't do on most airliners. Exactly. So. Very nice. The, the seats are adjustable on the ground, fore and aft. Okay. And we have had a gentleman in here who's six foot four. Oh, I believe he, it. And he was lots of, I've got a full six or eight inches above the top of my head here. Yep. Now, I'm only average height, but even a big tall guy, you're taller than me, and you're still well shy of the Yep, of the a lot top. of space. Let's look at instrument panel. I'm looking at the instrument panel right now. It's beautiful, and it doesn't get in the way of my visibility. However, with, with shoulder belts on, I'd have a little trouble reaching that. Are there, you've got some changes coming about that? That is correct. A lot of attention was paid to the ergonomics of the design. This instrument console was designed to take up as little space as possible so as not to impede your forward vision. And it as, is beautiful that way, I grant you that. As you can see, you can look out below it and see the ground. Yeah, the camera, we'll have to catch some uh, shots of that here, but there are windows right down there I can see. I mean, I can see the ground coming up. I can't quite see the nose wheel, but it's close. Yes, so. the nose wheel is essentially between our feet down sure, there. Sure, sure. So this has what we refer to as the old steam gauges, the round gauges. Right. This is one of the first models that was built. 
The first couple of kits will be the same, but in due course we are going to move to Dynon glass panels and then this console will be moved closer to the pilot, probably uh, about in this space where my, my ah, mouth okay. is here. So it would be right here and you could then, because yes, now we're all touch screen, so you got to be able to touch it. Exactly. It comes with a uh, transponder down here okay. and a radio with a standby listen function so you can listen to two frequencies at once. Down here is the, uh, the heater control. A two speed and, fan. and your fan control yep. for pushing the air out up there. Exactly. Start button down here. We have the trim. The uh, key switch. To key switch. Okay. A little space for your cell phone or other goodies. Another feature that's unique is the electric parking brake. It won't work now because the air car's not on, but you depress this button, pull this lever, and it'll click into, into position. Ah, okay. All right. And then when you do your run up, there's actually a second click. You pull it further. Ah, really? Okay, because yes. you're going to really get some push on it. Exactly. Then, so, okay. So also, uh, trim select, left side or right side. Between us is the, uh, the fuel cook. Okay. Up here is the rotor brake. Okay, let's come back to the rotor brake in a minute, but up here above my head, I doubt the camera can see that very well, a series of switches including all your light switches, your circuit uh, uh, breakers, and uh, uh, some controls for the mags and for the uh, turbo, because this is a turbo in it. Yes. We're going to get outside and look at the engine, but this has the 914 turbo. That is correct. So you've got a couple controls up there, place for you to hang, hang your headsets and like that. Right. What storage area do you offer in the aircraft covers? Dan, there's actually quite a lot of space. Below your seat is a space to put okay. maybe a, a logbook or a cell phone, wallet, etc. We have pockets on both okay, sides. Okay, right down here outside, there's a pocket. And the inside. Okay, and here as well, you yep. see. We have a little saddlebag, which is not installed right now, but you can put it in front of the console. Ah, okay, so you have another bag concept that can use yes, some of that. Small there's a lot of area out there. Yep, where you can maybe put some uh, jackets. That's okay. It, right? uh -huh. We are planning something fairly light, obviously. Yes. That far forward because it has a long arm for the CG. Sure. We are planning in the future a camper version. You can actually lie down and sleep in this aircraft. Yeah. Well, I did see on some of your literature that uh, with some changes, of course, you could make an air ambulance out of this. Now, not in the U.S. at least yet. Maybe in the future, but uh, or public use could today. But but you could almost use this as an air ambulance then. You could. So that's yes. a pretty interesting thing. Well, you've got one more storage area, I understand, back yes. here. But you know what? Let's get out of the airplane so we can see what that looks like. Certainly. And I'll just relate what you're doing. Okay, so there's a there's a string between the seats there. And he pulls that up, and the seat then moves forward. Looks like uh, about four or five inches of range, something like that. All right, let's look into that storage, though. I'm going to take the microphone away from Corbus here again. So there's some little bags up here right behind your head. But here's the cool part. They come right out, and you can carry it with you. Yep. It's quite big. So it's it's quite a quite a large area there. It's shaped specifically to fit the uh, pointed toward the camera there, so they can see inside it. And uh, that fits in this cavity right back here, very neatly. Um, so custom luggage comes with the airplane. That's and I want to while the camera can see here. I mean, look how far out this is. This is I don't know a couple of feet out from just the edge, but from the center line, this is a very wide stance. It provides for a lot of stability on the ground, and you can also stand on these stub wings. Oh, really? Stub okay. wing. uh, uh, two things. First of all, Rotex 914 turbocharged, 115 horsepower on initial takeoff and 100 horsepower up to high altitudes if you yep. wanted. But there's a mechanism up here, a uh, hydraulic pump system, and there's a mechanism up there Tell me why that's different than what I've seen on some other products. There are various ways to start your pre-dotation of your rotor. Uh, some are mechanical. There are also an electrical system. We chose a hydraulic system. Well, it, this system provides for no maintenance. It is also relatively quiet and it's powerful. We have the hydraulic system. You can see the hoses coming out the uh -huh. top. There's no teeth to strip on that, like some mechanical designs. And down here, you see the little hydraulic reservoir on top of the engine here. We also have a special valve that was designed by the company ah, okay. to allow the system to function. Anyway, a very impressive product. There's not too many of them flying now, but this has gone through. It's got a German or set of approvals on it, I presume. It has, yes. You normally have to in that country. And in this country, it'll still have to be a kit. We're kind of hoping that might change in the not too distant future, but today it's a kit. Yes, sir. So if somebody says, wow, I am so impressed, I got to have this thing, what would you tell them about the length of time to get one 
and then the effort to have it be a flying aircraft and how they would go about that, Corbis. Certainly. The lead time for orders right now is about three months. We hope to get that down to below two months relatively soon. That's okay. the, all the, pretty fast, then. Huh? Yes, the build time for the for the first kit, which will arrive in a couple of months, we estimate to be about around three weeks. Again, that'll be our first kit build, and sure. with the experience we'll gain on that, we hope to get the build time down to below two weeks. And where and how would they do that? You've got some plans about that too, I understand. Yes, because Rotorvox and Flight Design are owned by the same holdings company. We are partnering on a, on a number of things, one of which is that our first builder's assistance facility will be with Tom Pagini at Flight Design in Woodstock, Connecticut. Ah, okay. All right. So Connecticut on the East Coast, yes. and then you're located somewhere else. And this aircraft is going somewhere else yes. at the end of the show, right? That is correct. Tell I'm located in Denver, Colorado. Denver, at, uh, okay. KBJC, Rocky Mountain Metro Airport. After the show, I'll be flying this beauty up to Colorado. And that's where she will be based until we have the second one flying. And in due course, I hope to set up a second builder's assistance facility up in Denver. Uh, one thing we didn't do because it wasn't in some earlier reporting on my website and perhaps elsewhere is the empty weight of the aircraft. The empty weight of the aircraft is between uh, 600 and 700 pounds, depending okay. on how it's configured. That's really fairly light then. Yeah. Pretty solid. It is very well constructed, but it is very light. One person can easily ground maneuver this aircraft, which we do all the time. Beautiful. It has enough payload capacity for two adults, full tanks, and these overnight bags full for uh, some camping. All right, sounds great. Corvus, have you got a website that we can send people to, to where they can contact you and find out more information? Yes, Dan. Uh, we have a Facebook page, Rotorvox Aero. Okay. At Facebook, and then the manufacturer's website is rotorvox.com. Okay, so Rotorvox is the company in Germany, and rotorvox.com. Yes, sir. Your company is Rotor Rotorvox Aero. Correct. And that's the sort of the U.S. name for yes, the company. Yes, I am the distributor for Rotorvox in the Americas. Okay, yes. very good. I've had some reporting on this. I look forward to more and a flight in this beauty someday. You can find that and lots of affordable aviation on buydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Corpus Burger and myself here at Sun and Fun.